Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome from uh, sunny South Africa. Um, we are a primary school, Everstall Primary School, with 1,300 learners situated in uh, the northern suburbs of Cape Town, South Africa. Our language of learning and teaching is English and Afrikaans, one of the 11, two of the 11 official languages in South Africa. Uh, the presentation this afternoon will be done by myself and Mr. Geis Berger, one of our deputy headmasters. Check my screen. Our vision at Eversdale Primary is to truly develop the full potential of every learner. This is very well described in our vision and mission statements, and the highlights are relevant relevant for our talk. If you can peruse our mission, you will see I've highlighted a few things uh, in, in the mission statement, which is very important for us and will be highlighted throughout this talk this afternoon. The success of a primary school can really uh, cannot really be measured by testing, although many education systems use testing to gauge the quality of the system. We made a strategic, strategic decision in 2012 to make a drastic change to our approach to teaching and embrace the challenges of the 21st century and whole brain teaching and learning. Our vision gradually incorporated the challenges of the fourth industrial re revolution, um, which obviously no one used those terms in 2012. To develop the full potential of every child, we understood that we had to change our whole approach to teaching and find a way to make our school and our delivery suit the individual needs of our learners and move our school, our classrooms and our teacher away from the standard left brain approach where the teacher dominates the lesson in the front of the classroom. We recognized that our teacher, that our learners were individuals and they had different needs. The picture presented to you is, is a typical picture of the 19th century classroom. Many of our classrooms today still look like this. This is even more so uh, the need that we that we saw in, in South Africa, where we have an inclusive education system where we have to accommodate learners with, with learning disabilities and, and, and barriers. We needed to change. We needed to change our curriculum, our approach and our delivery. We needed to change the way our teachers taught. We needed definitely to look at our classroom layout, change our school, adapt and improve the areas in our school, and most of all, find a way in which to deliver the curriculum to every individual learner. Why our approach to individualized learning? I want to quickly just, this is still my introduction. The focus therefore was to reach every learner and develop his or her full potential. And the second one, to use all the tools and technology and techniques in a world where classrooms are getting larger and contact time with the teacher is becoming a problem. These were our foci and these were the things that we addressed. Our approach was tested during COVID and although it wasn't planned for COVID, it worked perfectly. It was not planned, but the outcome definitely was planned for, for us. So if we quickly look at the agenda this afternoon, we will be breaking down our talk in the following five topics. Developing the classroom, which I will do myself. Then our, our timetabling model. Uh, we have an Africanized, it's a terminology we use in Africa approach to the Finnish one hour model. I will talk about that. And then staff development will be, due by, will, will be done by Mr. Berger, one of our deputy heads. And the e-curriculum he will speak about as well. And then infrastructure, I will say something about. Right, to start off with the classroom layout and, and, and how we changed our classroom. We needed to incorporate the skills and challenges for the fourth, fourth industrial revolution in our curriculum. And this manifested in the way in how our learners engage with each other in the classroom. For this, we needed to have a media rich curriculum and a classroom and a working environment where the learners experience the working methods in which our modern workforce works, thinks and collaborate in dealing with content, data and challenges. If we think of how people work in the workforce, um, they definitely not, do not sit in rows. 
and listen to a single speaker sitting in front and speaking to them. Uh, they collaborate, they talk to each other, and they engage with each other. Therefore, we needed to change our desks. We, we needed to change the styling of our classrooms. And most important, we needed to change the way the teacher engaged with them. Mr. Berger will explain our approach to our e-curriculum and our Microsoft OneNote platform to, to you later. We have very small physical, physical classrooms uh, with an average of 32 learners per classroom. So we're quite limited to the size of our, our venues. So we removed all the traditional desks from our classrooms and designed and built our own desks for our learners. These were a combination of U-shaped desks. You will see some pictures that I'll show you um, for grades one to five that can accommodate five, uh, five to six learners, as well as a single singular desk for grade six to seven. Our teachers can move freely throughout the classrooms uh, and there is no specific front or rear in the classroom anymore because the learners are, are formed in groups and face each other. These triangular desks can be arranged in any formation. There you see an example of different ways in which the classroom is set up. We removed most of our floor standing classroom furniture and installed creative storage and shelving against the walls. By doing this, we removed clutter and created optimal floor space for our desk arrangements. The result is that the, that the classroom does not have a traditional front and learners face each other in groupings. The teacher can teach from, from his or her tablet and is therefore mobile between the learners. We migrated from projectors and interactive whiteboards to 65 inch TVs in 2016 when we moved over to the one to one Boyd program. Again, something Mr. Berger will say something about. This is part of our vision of developing our primary school learners to become participant in the learning process in a, on different levels. Sorry, sir, five minutes left. Okay. Sorry for that interruption. This is very collaborative and interactive. Our learners can share their own content from their own device onto the classroom TV or on the collaborative content e-platform. The learners in our school is a little more verbal, obviously. Uh, uh, more traditional teachers might frown upon our, our layout, but we have much more learner participation and there is more collaboration between learners and between learners and teachers. Our classroom layout and our method of teaching is much more conducive for whole brain teaching and learning. I will then I will now move on to timetabling. Um, and and you'll see the breakdown of, of the timetabling uh, agenda that I'll, that I'll discuss with you. The South African education system has a strict requirement for timetabling, so I will be very careful in, in how I explain our timetabling to you this afternoon. While our approach might seem strange uh, for South Africans, it is possible for us to explain how we meet the requirements of the South African system in our timetabling model. Many schools operate on a bell system, or most schools operate on a bell system, and I, again, I'm talking about primary schools, where uh, learners move from teacher to teacher, or subject to subject, regulated by bells. Research has shown that this is not conducive for developing of a primary school learner, and we prefer class teaching from grade one to six. We believe it is better for developing the learner as a, as a whole, um, uh, it gives a teacher more time to engage with uh, a pupil and uh, develop with the people uh, or developing the learner for the whole year. Again, I want to refer to our mission statement. Uh, there are a few things in our mission statement that stands out that shows how we engage in our timetable with our mission statement. If one refers to our mission statement, you will find that our core focus is not on content delivery, but that understanding is more important than mere knowledge. In many cases, we find that uh, our teaching in the primary schools can become a, 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 a factory of, 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 uh, of sharing knowledge and testing, but, but we feel that, that engaging with our learners on different levels is more important. So our mission statement uh, emphasizes different modes of learning. 
it focused the context or the or the concept that that learning is a lifelong experience. It's very important that we focus that learning has to be in context of the world we live living and that we teach our children that there are citizens engaging in finding a solution that benefits humanity. And I will get back to that regarding our phenomena based teaching or our project based teaching. Our timetable is very much geared towards our mission. So back to our timetable. As I said, we have an Africanized model of the Finnish timetable model. It is loosely based on one hour block periods. The sketch, uh, as I showed it to you, and I'll just quickly go back to it. Um, it's a very, a very simple breakdown of, of what a day looks like. Um, our typical day starts with a sure, silent, interrupted, uninterrupted reading exercise, 15 minutes. Our first block hour is 45 minutes teaching and a 15 minute health uh, snack time. I'll just go back to my block again. The second block is again a, a 45 minute teaching and then 15 minutes uh, for, 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 uh, for lunch just before break. Then they have a 30 minute lunch, uh, a 30 minute uh, break in which they, they go out to play. Then after break, they can come back for their third hour block, uh, which is also 45 minutes. And then the teacher can give them a break again in which they do not go out. And then for the fourth session, they come back, they have their fourth hour and that is a full hour. And then for the, for the, for the last session uh, is a 15 minute walk that they have. And we call this the Efrakilu, where the whole school and staff walks the border of the school. And it's part of a healthy living program. Our fifth hour block, 45 minute teaching, and this runs over to the last session of the day. Our last 30 minutes is our phenomena based teaching program, where all subjects is combined in one theme. And um, I know many schools refer to this as project based learning. And in, in this program, we choose one topic, uh, example, plastics in the ocean. And um, all the subjects are co covered in this team. And all the teachers in that grade teach the different components of this subject. All right, that's the basic um, program. Then there are three programs where our learners go to different venues for, for classes. The one is physical education. Uh, the other is art, and then we have a STEM and coding and robotics program. Our STEM and coding and robotics program is integrated into our weekly timetable. It is done from grade one to three. Uh, they go for approximately one hour of coding and, and robotics uh, per week. Uh, we do not have this as an extra subject, but draw our content from our curriculum. We do have two specialists that, that do coding, uh, robotics and, um, and, and, and STEM, but they do this with the class teacher and the class teacher co-teaches with the two specialists uh, incorporating the curriculum with which the, the children are working at a specific time. Uh, during coding and robotics, the junior learners use Lego We Do. The senior learners do programming with Lego Mindstorm EV3, and they also do drone coding with DJA Tello drones. I thank you for my session at this stage, and I will hand over to Mr. Berger, who will continue with staff development and curriculum. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you to Mr. Arangis. My session will be staff development and e-curriculum. So to cover the staff development side, in order for us to reach our goals that we set in the previous slides, we needed to think differently about staff development. Now teacher programs are already so busy, we had to find, find creative solutions without adding more time and expecting more of our teachers. In 2013, we started a new staff development program we had training sessions that was a combination of upskilling our staff 
as well as change management. The upskilling part of our training program was firstly to better uh, equip our teachers with the daily routines of using computers in their classrooms with specific reference to learner administration, emails, marks, setting papers, etc. Then we covered a training program how to use tablets in the school with a specific focus on touch technology. Now in 2013, this was new to our teachers because most of our teachers still had uh, cell phones or mobile phones with buttons on them. So we had a very intensive uh, tablet uh, teaching program. Then we used mainly two uh, content creation apps called Book Creator and Explain Everything. And we used these two apps to help our teachers on how to use a tablet in the classroom. Basic smart board um, skills on a tablet. We then went into a phase where we taught our staff the whole flipped classroom concept. And in 2013, 14 and 15, we used Edmodo to teach our learner, uh, uh, excuse me, our staff on how to use flipped classroom. This was an environment new to our staff where our learners and our teachers could communicate whilst our learners was not at school and also not only communicate, but use a bit of content um, on an electronic platform. Then we also went into a change mindset training part of our program where we firstly helped our teachers on classroom management and how to teach using technology in a class where learners sit in groups and how to gauge, engage with um, electronic content. We taught our staff how to do individualized learning and to support our learners while they are not at class. We changed the way our teachers think about education and how we want to teach in the school, as well as specific teaching strategies to accommodate whole brain learning. We got buy-in of our new philosophy about teaching in this course. So how did this course look like? Our training program consists out of sessions throughout the week. Now, we only met on two mornings uh, with our staff, which was on a Wednesday morning and a Friday morning. We thus created six time slots where we did staff training. It was on a Monday morning and afternoon, a Tuesday morning and afternoon, and a Thursday morning and afternoon. It was compulsory for our staff to attend at least one of these six sessions. What we also found that was if a particular staff member did not exactly understand or could apply what we taught them, we found that they came to more than one session. We also kept roll call uh, on, on the attendees at these sessions, and this also helped us to track the upskilling and the training staff development program of the school, as well as how to do a report on this training programs. We found that teachers in different grades who did previously not understand the world in which it, each of them teach, also help them to come together and to help to train or the progress between grades to better align these uh, progressions. The staff that came in small groups to these training sessions help for us to better assist them as well as for better interaction between these uh, uh, staff members and the person facilitating the training session. What is very valuable during these sessions is to also listen to staff. With all the engagement that we had with our staff, staff in small sessions during these uh, particular um, topics, we gained a lot of very valuable information from our staff. We also allowed them to vent a bit, and this is a place where we could then meet each other halfway and, and, and help to, to align them with the goals that we set. It's important for us to also only cover one specific aspect or topic during a week, which we then did repeatedly. Staff must apply what is learned, and therefore they must be actively involved in these training sessions, and we teach them something that they can immediately apply. To get to the e-curriculum, um, we, we found that to allow for individualized learning, we needed an interactive curriculum that we can edit. 
back in 2014, 15, when we started to think about writing our own curriculum, most uh, publishers of normal textbooks had e-versions of their particular textbooks, and we found that we would like something that we can edit and manipulate ourselves. So we created our own curriculum in 2017, and it was based on the South African education policy. We transformed the curriculum into an interactive live curriculum that can develop the skills necessary for the fourth industrial revolution. The curriculum is live, it's interactive, and it's multimedia. We use more text than, than normal textbooks, and this was important for us because we needed to challenge our learners with deep thinking skills. This helped our learners to develop higher order thinking skills and allow for creative problem solving and analytical thinking to apply the knowledge that we want to teach them. We fully integrated Office 365 in 2016. Although our learners were already accustomed with Word and Excel and PowerPoint and, and emails, etc., we introduced the other Office apps as well. Firstly, our learners then used OneDrive as their personal cloud storage space. Our whole school uses SharePoint as, as our cloud storage with all the data of our school that our staff can access everywhere. OneAd is our primary curriculum platform, and I'll get back to that later. We use Teams to live stream our lessons. We also use Stream and we also stream our lessons to learners at home, especially during COVID as well as during isolations. Teams is also used for intervention and academic support while learners are at home. Yammer is to communicate between learners and the teacher. We communicate through Office 365 and the securities of, of the Office domain and not by use of WhatsApp or third party apps. Stream we use to publish our videos that our teachers create. We also embed these videos into our OneNote uh, notebooks so that our learners can access them while at home. We use OneNote, as I said, as our primary curriculum delivery platform. Learners can engage with the content and explore other venues of learning whilst they are in class. They can edit, they can manipulate, they can add, and they can personalize their environment on how they learn and for them to create space for taking notes, inserting text, images, videos, etc. These learners become empowered to change their learning environment and cater for their own learning style. We use WANA. We ask our teachers to upload their work after completing through, through lockdown our new or, or during installation through lockdown or now, during isolations, this is how we track our curriculum coverage when our learners insert their work onto their OneNotes. We found that learners who struggle during normal school activities are more engaged in their work and communicate with more confidence in this electronic environment, than, and that has a very positive impact on their results. Our teachers also teach from the same notebook, and this allows for collaborative teaching. OneNote has been a very good attribute to our school and we use it in our daily teaching activities. I will now hand over to Mr. Arangis and he will cover the last two aspects. Thank you. All right. Um, we near the end of our presentation. Although the task, I have a quick summary of the infrastructure. Although the task of implementation um, of infrastructure could be a daunting task for some, we stuck with the basic principles of uh, an enterprise in in infrastructure. Early in 2012, <clears throat> we researched a cheaper and less known brand, Ubiquity, and started building our system with it. Uh, Ubiquity has since developed as a bigger but still very affordable brand and many other schools in South Africa is using it at the moment. Our school uh, is equipped, uh, just to refresh your memory, um, we have a thousand, this is this I'm going to say offhand now, I'm just going to ask my tech support to help me here quickly. 
We we have a thousand three hundred um, learners in the school. We have approximately devices um, a thousand devices running in the school. We have twenty three ubiquity managed uh, switches um, and a fiber optic backbone to ensure optimal internet connection throughout our school. We get an approximate average of, of five hundred megabytes per second. Um, throughput to our devices. Um, we have uh, about 73 APs uh, deployed in our school. Every classroom has its own access point. Um, we are also on the system, we have uh, 130 CCTV cameras, uh, uh, computed uh, uh, CCTV cameras also running on our system. And all of this is running on top of um, Microsoft Office 365, and we're running an Azure server um, in the cloud-based, and all our data running on SharePoint. The system was built over a few years, and um, we're quite fortunate enough to, to, to do all our work in-house, and we've got competent staff, uh, two staff members that, that run our systems for us which makes it very affordable. We are a fully deployed, as Gais has, has said, we are a fully deployed Microsoft Office 365 school um, running an Azure server. And running Microsoft OneNote um, as our e-learning platform makes it possible for our learners to use any device, Apple, Microsoft, or Android, as their one-to-one -one avoid device. That brings us to the end of our presentation the, this afternoon. And um, just to summarize the foci, the five foci for individualized learning for us, um, it, it, it took us 10 years to get to the point where we are today. And if I have to summarize the, 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 the most difficult part of it was uh, in, in early 2012, um, to 2012 13, it was difficult to decide which um, technology to use. Um, the, the, the most uh, well known technology was obviously things like Cisco, which was quite expensive. And uh, we were looking for cheaper options that, that would work well. And uh, we, we, we were glad we found something. Um, thereafter, the technology became the, the, the least. A difficult aspect of our process that we had to do. The the most difficult part is is the human factor and and change mindset of our staff. I think we approached it in the right way by by helping our staff to 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 do this slowly and and progressively over the years, explaining why and and uh, changing changing their attitude and making them understand why we had to do it. Um, so we built the whole process layer by layer over the years uh, to something that made sense to our staff and also our community. So developing our classroom lay layout was important. Um, changing our timetabling and um, I must say it, it helped our, our interaction with, with, with conference that we did in Finland helped us in that regard. And then building and writing our own e-curriculum helped us to attain this. And in the end, getting our whole infrastructure together and, and running smoothly made it easier for our staff to, to make this all happen. So that's a summary of our talk this afternoon. I think we, we're a bit shorter on our time. That gives us a time for one or two questions. Um, I'm going to ask um, our support team whether there are any questions there. I think there might be one or two. OK. Um, how do learners access, get hold of the curriculum? Um, ask Mr. Berger to come slide in next to me. Um, at, at this stage, uh, we only started deploying the, the e-curriculum. We started at the end of 2017. Um, and it is it is the de deployed to them uh, the term prior to the, the next term starting. So at the end of the second term, the content will be deployed 
to them by their teachers via the OneNote platform. Uh, at this stage in our school, we still give them a printed version as well, but we find that many of our children do not use the printed version of the, of the um, let's call it the content anymore. I've got another question here from a gentleman in Egypt. Thank you for the, for the question all the way from Egypt. Uh, would you suggest on-site support for technical issues? Uh, what we've done in the school is we have appointed uh, two IT managers in the school and we found that we can save a lot of money if we try to implement as many of the infrastructure as well as the software and desktop support ourselves. So that has worked well for us over the uh, couple of years. Um, but we do have schools in the surrounding areas that have outside contracts with with IT support uh, companies. But as a cost saving aspect, if you can afford it, I think it is better for you to to appoint your uh, desktop support and IT managers in the school if you can. Um, I, I would just like to uh, enhance that question. Or I think I think if 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 the whole concept of, of the fourth industrial revolution, um, uh, coding and robotics, technology integration into schools, if one, if one sees that as an important aspect of one's school, I cannot see that a school cannot not have uh, support staff in their staff complement in this field. Um, it is it is important that teachers must be able to do their work uh, without being hindered or, or stopped, uh, not having support to 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 work and to engage with their learners and and not being able to work because of technical issues. So I I, I think going forward that will be an, an area that that one has to invest in. Right. Another question now, do you ensure that all staff members adopt this approach? Um, well, firstly, can I maybe just say that it is something that we've done over many years. It is not something that was on our, upon our staff to implement within the next year or so. We've planned it um, according to specific deadlines. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, most of the uh, goals that we spoke about today was set in a strategic session with our governing body in 2013 and we implemented most of those goals only in 2019. So the buy-in from staff is something that is, is done through staff development over a couple of years, providing good support that Mr. Arangi spoke about, as well as to make sure that our staff understand the larger whole picture that you are busy with and not not initially try to implement something new every now and then but to keep them in line with a with an end goal with them <clears throat> with a strategic way forward and allow them to understand where you are going and and to help them understand that if they put in hard work and they and they implement what what we want them to then that will also create a workspace environment for them which they have actually less work with regards to things like preparation etc yeah it's important that what we showed our staff is that um that when it comes to 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 um, change mindset and doing new things or doing things differently is that um, especially when it's when it has to do with technology is that um, do not train people without the possibility of implementation and if you if you train and and you want to implement make sure that that what needs to be implemented works and and do not do not have a new vision or a new idea every second year or third year make sure you have a plan in, that you that you want to do and stick to that plan and continue on that path uh, we, we set out our plan in 2030 
uh, that's that's many years ago. So now when a staff member comes into our school, he or she does not have to have the skill set that 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 our staff members have. They 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 adapt and adapt to what we what we do in our school within the next the first month. Uh, it is not so difficult. It, it's a it's a mindset, and if the mindset is present in your school, uh, that is the mindset. It sounds very simple, but it's the way it works uh, in our school, and no one is forced to do it. That's just the way it works. Um, yeah, I think. I think yeah. that those are those are the questions that we have. Then, from from my side, I want to thank uh, Mr. Berger, Fesh Berger. Thank you very much, Mr. Berger. Thank you, Mr. Darling. And then uh, to all of you out there, thank you very much for listening. Thanks. And um, to our technical staff standing on the other side of the screen, both of them, their names are Arno and Arno. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Bye bye. Cool. Join Time Magazine's lead education reporter alongside global educators and advocates to explore the impacts of teaching forgiveness. I teach forgiveness because it can have a positive impact in my students' families. It helps my students thrive in the face of adversity. Students who can forgive are happier. Join us to hear from teachers and thought leaders on how and why to include forgiveness in your classroom. Temperature rise will bring widespread devastation and unprecedented extreme weather. New coronavirus cases emerge across the country. Obesity rates have more than doubled in kids. Cape Town is running out of water. 